man, I just gave birth. I could do anything. Everybody telling me, well, your life will never be the same. Mm -hmm. oh, and it's awful. <laughs> I know, it was really bad. That might be controversial, but that's my opinion. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a hobby. I had nothing. What? I'm like, well, what do I do until the, I, and she's like, you just don't sleep. So this is my biggest insight on like being a mother. <laughs> we are privileged as women to experience that. Art was the only way to Find feel myself again. again. Yeah. yeah. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Light Movement Podcast. I'm really excited today to be hosting this episode and we're talking all about motherhood and some surprising tips for mom artists. And I know there's a lot of mom artists out there watching this and there's just so many questions around being a mom and having like having your kids and having a career in art and how do you balance that? And I'm really excited to ask you guys about your experience and just any advice you have. Um, I think it's gonna be a fun conversation. So today we have Rita as a guest with us and she's an amazing artist. She's also a mentor for us with Milan Art Institute in our mastery program and Art Club Pro. If you don't know her work already, definitely follow her and check out her beautiful, amazing paintings. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so Rita, you're a new mom and you have a two-year-old son, right? Three, three-year-old. Three. Okay, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have been asking me during my pregnancy, like how I've dealt with being pregnant and painting and balancing all that. And I'm curious how you guys handled it. And like, is it safe to be painting while pregnant? And did you continue like normal or did you change anything? What was your experience? I got pregnant uh, actually in the middle of the mastery program. <laughs> and I remember um, I couldn't stand a smell of oils mm -hmm. for like a month. And um, I messaged Ellie. Ellie said, just work with acrylic, you know, for now. After a month, I was back to my normal self. And I had a good, you know, easy pregnancy. So um, there were no things that doctor like told me not to do. So I was actually continuing working through the whole pregnancy. I think um, in the last months, I had to switch my chair to like a Swiss ball because it was, oh, it's a really... Cool. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't put a lot of pressure. Mm, so sitting for a long time is not great when yeah. you're pregnant. So I was, um, but standing is hard also when you have so much weight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm already, uh, I'm feeling it. Yeah, so yeah. the Swiss ball was a trick. I was just bouncing on it and painting. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. I, I want to try that. Yeah. <laughs> so what about you? Like, do you remember, I mean... It, it was, was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> Um, Did you change anything or I guess some people are really sensitive to smells. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's different for every person and some people are sensitive to smells and it really bothers them. I was sensitive to how John smelled. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I don't know why, but he smelled like a goat to me. Oh, and that's awful. <laughs> I know it was really bad. And so every time he got near me, I was like, ah, oh, ah, oh, just move. Oh, I smell goat. And <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. And so, um, anyway, that was a little weird, but, and like things like broccoli, I remember broccoli smelled really weird to me and my soap smelled like dirt, but <laughs> paint didn't bother me. Paint didn't bother me at all. But I think I remember at the time I was collaborating with, um, your dad still with John and, I typically painted in acrylics. Oh, okay. So I don't know how much oil. I'm sure I used oil a little bit, and I don't remember it bothering me, but I probably painted more in acrylic. So, yeah, that's a safe route for people who mm -hmm. maybe are more sensitive, like you're saying, to oil painting and yeah. the fumes. I think, but I think it is there's still... just so many eco-friendly, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the solvent is, is safe, the... Definitely just try to have lots of air, ventilation. So that in the studio really will help. I told you uh, just before the podcast that I discovered alcohol inks after, you know, being pregnant and everything. So I think if I was doing, I would actually stop doing it. Mm -hmm. But I think everything else is mm, safe. 
just try to go on walks in between sessions or something, get some oxygen. I, my, my baby's absolutely healthy and happy. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think, I, th I mean, when I was pregnant, they didn't have back when I was pregnant, <laughs> they, they, they didn't have, uh, all these like alternative, um, you know, going green wasn't a thing back then. So they, they didn't have the eco-friendly, um, non-toxic stuff. And I even used mineral, we used mineral spirits because I painted in the same oh, studio as wow. your dad. And even though I was probably in acrylics and he, he would paint in oil, he used mineral spirits. We didn't have, um, you know, what we use like now, soy thin, soy or, thin or eco house. <laughs> so, um, and oil paint, I don't think is toxic because linseed oil, walnut oil, none of that is toxic. It's, it's the solvents that are, and I think People should just listen to their body. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know, yeah. if it doesn't bother you, I think we're, you know, moms are great, you know, incubators and, you know, filters. You know, we filter out things from the baby. So I think if it bothers you, it's going to bother the baby. If it doesn't bother you, I don't think it's going to bother the baby. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And during this whole pregnancy, I've felt extra sensitive to things, but not during painting. There's nothing that's... Um, that I've been like, like had an aversion to, like there's no smells or I didn't feel sick. I didn't get a headache, nothing. So I just been listening to that. And but you use a lot of safe material. I mean, yeah, you I use soy thin. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of people asking like what kind of, um, solvents or what can you use to kind of like get rid of some of those fumes. So, um, just using, um, like you said, the eco house, it's made from citrus, so it's not as strong. Um, soy thin has absolutely no smell. I don't smell anything with that. Yeah, I love soy yeah. thin. So for me, if you're an oil painter, like I think using those alternatives will definitely help. Have you guys noticed, like, were you ever sensitive to, I don't know, like music or were there certain things that you now are kind of getting away from like actual painting supplies, but for me, I've been really sensitive to music. Like if there's, I used to have, um, I would be listening to my older playlists and like there's certain songs that come on and just like really rubs against my spirit. Like I just can't listen to it. Wow. That's so, interesting. Yeah. I don't that's know. That's cool. Is that like anything you guys experienced or? Well, I experienced that without a baby in my belly. Oh. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, if I hear music um, that just, I don't know. And the I'll find out later. Maybe. Yeah. And and then I'll read the words later or I'll ask somebody about the words or I'll start to listen to the words and I'm like, oh, you know, and sometimes I don't even know why. It's just the sound mm -hmm. grates on me. And I'm super, I've always been very sensitive to music. I don't remember that being anything different when I'm trying to think. What about you, Rita? Have you? I'm... I don't really like listening to music actually when I paint because oh. it distracts me so much. I'm mm -hmm. such a task-oriented person. So when I listen to music, I just listen to very, um, like nothing slow, nothing fast. It's either just like like this music. I don't know. Does it make sense? It just keeps the rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the time it has, it, sometimes it doesn't even have the words. Like it's just very distracting to me. In general, so I can't really say if I felt yeah, anything. Yeah, everyone's pregnancy. different, and yeah. yeah, I know some people like to just paint in silence too. Oh, I lately, love that. Yeah, yeah. Lately, I don't know. Like, I just no, none of my music sounds good. I just want to like, it's hard. Like, I don't want to listen to anything. Yeah. So well, that is so interesting to yeah. me because your baby can hear the music. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if like your first like um, step of motherhood is like you know, almost like protecting yeah. him from loud sounds. Yeah, or... because it, like music holds so much emotion and thought and spirituality and whoever is creating the music, it's like whatever they worship, that's that's in the music, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever they're um, looking at or, or what's in their heart, you know, and if they're going through like, you know what I mean? It's It's really encoded in the music, I think. I can hear it. So something I'm wondering, um, while you guys were pregnant, did you ever, did you see it change your art at all? Did you see it, like, were you inspired to paint something different or, I don't know, like, did you have some kind of breakthrough in your art? Do you remember anything standing out? 
I actually remember distinctly that um, my art changed a lot in the feeling of art um, a- after I gave a birth. Oh, interesting. Like during the, before, during the pregnancy, before I gave a birth, it was all what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Before. Like it was just, you know, um, I don't know. It was just a certain style. And then after I felt um, like a, a just a change and... Um, I kind of c- felt a little more connected to myself and a little more calm. I don't know. Dream. Just it, and you know, it, I took maybe it's a little bit later in our discussion, but I took a month off um after I gave a birth. A month off and then I started painting again and then I was like Maybe because it was such a crazy, it was like a life before and life after, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. So I really um, had some time to reflect on everything for a month and it just brought me to another level of That's so feeling. cool. What about you? I don't think so, but I was in a very different place. Like I didn't paint um, what I wanted to paint back then. I wasn't like yeah. free as an artist. I painted, you know, for the decorative market and we had dealers that, looked for a specific kind of work. I think that was like that through every pregnancy. So I never was in a space where I was, you know, just painting what I wanted to paint. I painted, I was on this like treadmill of what was selling. And so, um, and we just had orders and we were fulfilling orders. I can think of, um, you know, things that changed in me through motherhood and through raising kids and, you know, how you change over the years through that, then I can associate that um, kind of thing with my art, especially later when things got more free Mm -hmm. and I was able to paint. I got, you know, more and more out of that decorative market and more into the collectible market. Those shifts happened more naturally. I haven't really noticed. I kind of was expecting, like, maybe I'd be inspired to to paint pregnant women or to see, like, what's the inside of a womb look like. I, I don't know. I had these expectations for myself that I would be excited to paint these things, and it just hasn't come. I haven't had that inspiration. So it is interesting. Like, But I, I could see after giving birth this breakthrough happening, or it's such a huge... I can only imagine. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but <laughs> that it's going to be like totally life-changing and it's so natural for you to have a breakthrough or something really different happen to you and that be expressed through your art. I got, well, during pregnancy, I got just so sick and tired of everybody telling me, well, your life will never be the same. Mm-hmm. But it's true. Like it sounds, you know, I heard it so many times and it's like, oh, you will never be able to do things you were doing before. You will be doing them, but differently. Mm-hmm. And it's true. But um, it's such a rewarding experience that taught me so much and gave me so much comparison to my art. Um, kids and art. I can share it a little later. But like, it's just amazing to me. And the more he grows, the more I learn, you know, about my art, about myself, just seeing him grow and my relationship with him. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you were sharing that after um, after you gave birth, you kind of took like a month's break. Like, how did it feel getting back into painting after you gave birth? Or for you, like, how soon was it when you, and you've had four kids? So like, what was it like transitioning? You just had a baby and you're trying to balance like your career and art. How did you guys do that? Yeah, I had it pretty good because um, John also is an artist. And so he was home uh, to help take care of the baby. And so I wasn't completely on my own to do that. And But at first, like when you were born... Um, and maybe even up to Daphne, we weren't, we were pretty average in, you know, finances and we were definitely like every penny was accounted for and it was going to the bills. And so we didn't have extra money to hire people or to, um, not work and have the luxury to take time off and that kind of thing. Like we, we had bills to pay. And if, if I didn't paint, they wouldn't be paid. Mm -hmm. So we prepared a little bit ahead of time and kind of, built up the inventory so that I could take some time off. And I think with you, it was about a month. And then um, I think Daphne and Dahlia, it was a little faster. Like Daphne was like two weeks. Oh, wow. And then Dahlia was about a month. I can't remember with Dino, but Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah. So still pretty fast, all that, I think. Yeah. yeah. And it, it really depends on how fast you recover. And for me, each each baby was a little different mm -hmm. in the recovery department. But I was going to say before, on your question before, um, uh, I, I remember something that I think changed in me, and I bet this changed in a lot of women, is um, being pregnant, carrying life inside of you, you know, making those sacrifices that you make, uh, and, and just the wonder and beauty of carrying that life and feeling, you know, your baby move and, and all those things is such a deep and profound experience. You start to really comprehend the, the responsibility you have, mm -hmm. right? Even just in your stage, you know, of, of creating this baby. Preparing. Yeah. And I think it's very empowering. And then actually giving birth, the whole process is super empowering. So I feel like because you've experienced this really empowering, profound experience, it builds a lot of confidence in you where you didn't know you even lacked that confidence. Yeah. It makes you feel, it made me feel like really feminine in a very strong way. Mm -hmm. It made me feel empowered. It made me feel like, man, I just gave birth. I could do anything. That affects your art, I believe. I think it affects your confidence in just little things like, man, this hand is jacked up. How am I going to fix it? It's like, man, I just gave birth. I can fix that hand, <laughs> you know? So it's like, I don't know. I feel like that's like a huge sort of um, like indirect result of the honor of getting to be a mom, you know? Yeah, I'm really excited for that. Like I'm actually, I'm looking forward to giving birth and being past that and just, I don't know, feeling, feeling really empowered. So yeah, it's, it's probably the most incredible experience uh, a person can have, honestly. Yeah. We are privileged as women to experience that. You guys both answered, I think, or yeah. did you, do you have more to say? Um, no, it, yeah, it took a month. It felt really weird. And I, I felt like I, I have never done this before. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe it was because I paint all the time. Like since yeah. I um, set myself on the path of, okay, I'm going to be an artist. I, I When I don't paint, it feels so weird. Yeah. And I get antsy and antsy, anxious. Totally. So um, I remember that first month was so difficult because, you know, we didn't sleep and I'm just in general was freaking out about everything, you know, having a newborn baby and all the things I've, I don't, I didn't know, I have never experienced. So I think important thing to remember is to really listen to yourself and like, yeah, for us, you know, maybe it was good like a month, but some people I've met that they had to take three months and even like six months because mm -hmm. of, you know, conditions and uh, complications and all that stuff. I'm sure there's like going to be all kinds of mothers uh, listening to this, expecting mothers. So kind of like uh, taking also what I learned from all the people I talked to about what to expect. I heard none of the story was repeating itself. Yeah, like, everyone's different. Everyone yeah. is so different. So you just need to expect that you have to listen to yourself. Yeah, you're on your own journey. Yeah. And if you're yeah. like anxious and, you know, you want to paint, then you'll find the time. If you feel like you're not ready yet, you know, and you need more time and maybe, you know, you'll want to make sure you sleep and the baby's, you know, fed and rested. And if that is important at that stage, then you should do it and kind of listen to yourself and, and see when you want to go back to painting. Yeah. That's yeah. good advice. I was the same. I was super antsy. Like it was hard to not yeah. paint. And so it would like painting at two weeks with Daphne was just because I felt could. normal. Yeah, yeah, it felt normal. So I think like you'll know, you'll know exactly when you can. And it's not like painting is like you lift heavy things. Yeah, or exactly. You, you yeah. can always get on your bouncy ball, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you manage like the exhaustion or lack of sleep? That's something like I'm really curious about. And I know a lot of people probably struggle with like after the fact, just getting used to like that new routine and well, my son was born um, first 
almost two months, my mom was helping me a lot. Um, so when I needed to sleep, I could sleep. Um, and then um, I started, you know, painting. Mom went back home and COVID hit. <laughs> so no, nobody could hire nannies, babysitters. My husband had to work from home, but he was working. Yeah. So I actually found myself and later when he was still home before you know, he started going to school, I found myself um, being more motivated and disciplined than ever. Oh, wow. Because mm -hmm. I knew I only have an hour and a half to do something. Yeah. So I would just go and paint because I already recovered, you know, physically. Uh, my son started sleeping a little better. His naps became more regular so I could actually plan around. So I was way more, you know, because when you have more time, you actually lose a sense of it and you sit on the couch a little longer than you should. <laughs> and you know, you sit in your phone a little longer than you should. But you, when you like on a schedule of this is the time that I got, you just use it 100%. Mm -hmm. So this is what I noticed uh, because before I I had all the time in the world. And yeah, I, I still was doing a lot, but somehow I was a little bit less productive. Mm -hmm. So... So that was the, um, it was hard. First year was hard for me because I'm a very, um, not super flexible person <laughs> in the way that I need a plan. And with the baby, it was just like no plan. He woke up 15 minutes early and I still have oil paint and oh, solvent on yeah. my hands. And I'm <laughs> running and washing my hands, going to pick him up. But um, I definitely also felt like, because when you give a birth and you breastfeed and you're taking care of a newborn, for a certain time, you don't feel that you belong to yourself. Mm -hmm. You just, the baby owes you, <laughs> owes you, owns you. Owns oh, you. Like, it's just you, this breastfeeding machine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sorry, Dimitra. it's real. It's real. I'm telling you, it's real. So art was the only way to find feel yourself myself again. again. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it was my thing that nobody could take away from me. You know? That's good. So for me, I had a, a really different experience and I'm really, really thankful. What, what happened to me is I, I was 26. So I was, you know, really, really young. And I, of course, you're younger, but you're older. I was, I was a young 26. You're an old, <laughs> 23. you're an old 23 year old. I was a young 26. Anyway, I, I read everything I could get my hands on about being pregnant. And I don't know, maybe this means I'm narcissistic or something. I just, I knew everything my body was going through. I read all of it and it never occurred to me even once to read about how to care for a newborn just, just never occurred to me. <laughs> and so I had all that time, you know, I could have read, but I didn't. So I'm in the hospital and the nurse, um, brings me the baby back from, they give him a bath or whatever and brings me you. And she's like, and you know, time, time for you to feed your baby. Okay. So feed the baby. And then I go to hand her back. <laughs> and she's like, no, you, you keep your baby. And I'm like, it's yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, but I got to I need to sleep. And she looked at me and she was like, well, that's what that bassinet is there for. And I'm like, yeah, but she'll cry or something. Like I need to, I need to sleep. And she's like, well, you're going to have to get used to it. And I was just like in shock. Oh I was gosh. like, okay, well, how I go, when do they go to sleep for the night? And she's like, when they're six months old. And I was like, what? I'm like, well, what do I do until the, I, and she's like, you just don't sleep. And I freaked out. I completely freaked out. I, I didn't know that. I had no idea. And you didn't idea. talk to your mom about this? <laughs> Apparently not. And she didn't tell me. And so I completely freaked out. And so I was just in a tailspin for days about, I'm not going to sleep. I'll never sleep. I'm not allowed to sleep. And it freaked me out. Mm -hmm. So and it was true. Like every, every, it seemed like every hour mm -hmm. you, you cried and they say, well, when your baby cries, feed them. That's what they told me. So. Okay. This is actually good information for me because I have been, I mean, I've read about taking care of babies, but I'm also reading a lot about pregnancy and birth. And then I'm thinking, oh, my, my doula, my midwife will explain to me, how do I breastfeed and all that and like you so it's good for me to know this information because I feel like 
I don't even know. Yeah, but it, it <laughs> no, was, they will explain. Yeah. They will. The, yeah, it's they just... explain. But I highly recommend to read books on how to care for a newborn. Uh-huh. It it opened my it it changed my life honestly because I brought you home from the hospital and I'm in this regimen of every time you cry, feed, cry, feed, cry, feed, cry, feed, and I didn't have a life. It was like every hour. I I was feeding you. And so then my mom told me, my mom was there visiting and she said, no, just put the baby in her crib and she'll cry herself to sleep. She doesn't need to eat. You just fed her. And I was like, no, no. When they cry, you have to feed it. Anyway, it was, it was a disaster. And, um, so for two weeks, I didn't know what I was doing. And I was, I thought I was losing my mind because I don't think I slept more than 10 minutes in two weeks. So this friend of mine, Mary gave me this book called uh, Baby Wise, and uh, I read it. I'll write that down. <laughs> I highly recommend that whole series. Anyway, I read Baby Wise, and it told me about how a baby develops their their brain, their their mm-hmm. digestive system, everything, and it's based on parent led, mom led feeding versus baby led feeding, oh. feeding, mm-hmm. and to use a schedule and all this. So I followed it out of selfishness because I wanted to sleep and I did exactly what the book told me and every single one of you guys slept by eight weeks. So I only had, and even still you would sleep for like four or five hours in a night. Oh, that's so I fine. got, I got like five hours sleep most yeah. of the time. And throughout the day when you would wake up was totally predictable, like, like clockwork. And I could work my art schedule around your schedule because you were on a schedule and I knew, okay, they're going to eat you know, at six in the morning, nine in the morning, noon, three o'clock, and you're going to sleep at these times. And so I could work in when I did my stuff. I highly recommend reading about how to care for a newborn and figure out what your philosophy is and what feels right to you. I don't think that maybe works for every person. That worked for me because I was very structured and me time was really important. Um, And I, I needed... Like I, what you said was really great, Rita, that your art brought you back to yourself because I think a lot of moms can lose themselves Mm -hmm. and in just the care of their kids and put almost too much, it's an important job and I don't diminish it in any way, but you're a better mom if you can remain yourself. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah, the highest form of motherhood is still maintaining your desires and, and being, you know, walking in your destiny. And, and I think for an artist, for a female artist, um, at least for me, only motherhood was not my destiny. And, and I don't feel like I, I had to deny myself motherhood because I wanted to be an artist. I got, I got to have both. And I feel like for me, uh, being, um, really dedicated to my destiny as an artist made me a better mom. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? Like just, I don't know, like a hundred years ago, like women artists had to choose between a career in art or being a mom. Like Mary Cassatt. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's sad. Mm -hmm. I still don't understand why she couldn't do both, but. Yeah, I don't either. But that was, that was the deal. Yeah. Yeah. And Frida Kahlo, she couldn't have kids, but. Anyway, like I know to 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 have a career or be a, and be a mom is is hard to balance, but today it is like it's possible. You can mm-hmm. do it. Yeah. Okay, so you have a three year old now, and like, what does a normal day in the studio look like with a three year old? Like, how oh, do you? Well, I only pay like? when he's out of the house. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I I see so many moms, you know, trying to paint when baby s- sleeps in a sling, and they like all, you know, uh, doing that, or when the baby's like sitting here. Let's say let's go back a little bit to like a, before a year, maybe mm-hmm. a year. And maybe they like give them markers and like, oh, you can do whatever you want in here. I'm like, no, this is my workspace. <laughs> You're not allowed here. <laughs> um, I truly want to, because I work from home, you know, my business is at the house, my, you know, I'm, and my uh, family is at the house. So I really wanted to make sure nobody gets in <laughs> to my place. And I think it just, mm, my son is so active. He's just, um he just grabs everything and and throws everything and I I 
realized that keeping them just away from where I work is the best thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was never complaining, oh, why I can't I just put it in a sling and maybe in the beginning and you can just, you know, and I can paint. But that this is the this is what I am given. (laughs) (laughs) And it's probably the best thing for me. I do believe that, you know, if I had something different, um, I don't know, it would be different. But I'm like very focused um, on the task, so I don't need any distractions. So when he was seven months old, I was like, I'm done. (laughs) I don't want to do this mother thing anymore in a way that I needed help. Because mm-hmm. it was it was just me for yeah. a whole time. Um, my husband was helping me, but it was it was hard. Um, so at seven months, he's like, "Okay, why why don't we go to a daycare?" So we want to we went to the daycare, and I freaked out because I looked at all those babies laying there, looking at the ceiling. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not that kind of mother. So I took him back <laughs> home. <laughs> I'm like, I'll sacrifice a little bit more uh, until he can walk and actually like be a little bit more independent. Mm-hmm. So he started the school uh, and we hired a nanny. So for four, four hours a day, I was getting, you know, time to oh, paint. Perfect. And yeah. um, I actually, this was the funniest moment for me because for six years, before he was born, I was I was doing nothing. I didn't have a job. Um, I moved out of my country, so I started learning English, and we traveled a lot. So I didn't have a job. I didn't have a hobby. I had nothing. And then I um, gave her birth. I became professional artist, and then I became a mentor and coach for the Milan Institute. And it was like, of course, it all happened at once. <laughs> But it was amazing. I really think um, it was all perfect timing. So I started working for as a coach, a mentor, and kind of slowly went back to, you know, normal life. So the babysitter was coming, sitting with my son. And again, because I totally remember that we would have like Zoom calls and different things. And you it was like, yeah, okay, my babysitter will be there then. And yeah, I totally yeah, remember it was, that. It was hard, but it was, my my life was finally just full of things that I enjoyed, you know. And motherhood was one of the things that, um, I don't know, because of that, I enjoyed everything else even more. Yeah. Oh, so it, made, cool. it makes you a better mom because yeah. you could, you don't feel like you're losing out. So then when your son grabs things and throws things or makes a mess, you're like, oh, it's so cute. And you clean it up, you know, it's no big deal. But if it meant now you can't paint, now you can't do this, now you can't do that, it it like, it builds resentment, you know, when they're just being kids. Yeah. No, it's it's totally just absolutely amazing. So then he went to school and now I had half of the day till 3 p.m., <laughs> Nice. And I was like, wow, what a life <laughs> I can finally live. I can finally do my stuff. And then because I wasn't getting anxious that I w- wasn't getting the work done or painting done, I was actually a better mom. I was excited to see him and spend time with him. Whether before, I was like, gosh, I could have been painting right now <laughs> instead of changing diapers. <laughs> I know it maybe sounds like terrible, but when you just with a baby and can't do anything else. It just, I don't know. I, I was just getting anxious. So doing a little bit of, you know, things for myself and um, then taking care of my son, it really worked. And um, and then I was like, well, that's not enough time. <laughs> Let's put him for a full day to school. So now he's three and I actually think, you know, he's actually going to school and learning. And then, you know, I, I'm actually spending a quality time with him during the weekend I don't paint on weekends I don't try to like steal a minute here and there Mm -hmm. I really want to just be with him and put all the work or during when he was he's at school so that's really cool yeah so it's I imagine like a like a preschool where it's more plane so like- what's interesting like uh, um it's not a daycare a lot of our friends put their kids in daycares and they just dance and read books there this is like actual school 
<laughs> so um, they, they're like learning there in Spanish and wow. writing. Wow, and that's cool. <laughs> so he's, um, and they said, you know, out of all things, he loves art. Oh. I'm like, oh my God, I do not see it at home. And then so I got him a little easel and he just makes Aww. a mess and I go crazy because oh, I'm not so a messy cute. painter. So it's just, mama, let's let's paint. And he just like puts his hand into like the paint and just like smushes everything in a poopy color. <laughs> There's no, <laughs> nothing in there. But it's, it's really um, amazing that he just likes it so much. And every time he sees... Um, when I look at like a phone or painting, he's like, mama's paintings. Like he knows that Aww. those are my paintings. That's Aww. so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. I, I think collaborating with my kids is something I look forward to. I mean, I want it to work out. Of course it could be like you said, a poopy mess where <laughs> it doesn't look good, <laughs> but, um, but maybe, it, you can maybe work together. your son will make a painting at three years old. You did it at five. And it will launch your career even further. Oh, maybe. <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> I think the key to remember um, is really like what you said. Everybody's story is different and you're never going to hear the same thing repeat. Mm -hmm. And you have to find what works for you between you and, and your child. And um, and you always have to balance and weigh out their needs, their um, care and your care, your self-care, like you have to, you have, it, it is a balance. And I don't think women are meant to just sacrifice everything for their children. I don't think that that makes for good examples into motherhood or into, that's my opinion. That might be controversial, but that's my opinion. And we did all kinds of different things. It, it always changed. And I don't think and that's what I'm hearing from you too. You know, in three short years, you did lots of different things. Yeah. And and that's what we did. Uh, we hired um, a babysitter that came. Um, John and I used to call her our wife uh, because she she came and she took care of you kids three days of the week, and um, she cleaned a little bit, she cooked a little bit, and it was just it was like heaven. I would need and, that now. Yeah. It, <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> you need a wife right now. Right, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, so that was that was bliss. That was really great because I got to see them all throughout the day. And, you know, I came in to get a snack or I came in or I could hear them playing. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was really cool. And then when I was with them uh, the other days of the week, four days a week, I was I got to just enjoy them and be fully devoted in that moment. And that, that made it, you know, and like you said, I wasn't sitting there thinking, oh, I could paint right now, or I got to mm -hmm. get that done. I had that time to really focus and work. And then the rest of the time, you know, when you guys were busy or napping or sleeping, you know, we did a little bit of work here and there, but that worked great. Um, once you guys started going to school, things changed a little bit because I had like Dahlia and Dino home, but you and Daphne, who mm. spent time before watching them. Yeah. Because that was sometimes what we did when you were a little older, but you weren't in school yet. We made this half door. <laughs> Our studio door was, we cut it in half. Oh, so we I opened the top that. part. Yeah. And you guys, we had you keep everybody busy in the, in the family room there. Mm -hmm. And we could just like keep an eye on you looking over the door. And, uh, that's so funny. Yeah. I so totally we had, we had that. different systems that, that would change up. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, you know, you could trade art classes. Like some people don't have money for, you know, school daycare or, or, um, babysitters. And you can always find a young, um, aspiring artist that maybe would trade art classes and learn to paint or draw, uh, in exchange for watching your child. Mm -hmm. And um, there's always ways. There's always ways networking. You could find other artist moms and take turns watching each other's kids. Um, there's just so many things you can do that I, th I think the main thing is if you're really truly dedicated to your art and then, then having children is not going to get in the way of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, the biggest insight actually um, – it changed a lot since he was born and 
I don't consider myself motherly, you know, like being born for just being a mother. But it's absolutely amazing how uh, he, having him taught me how to treat my paintings. Like now, every time I talk to my students or like explain, um, because I'm a control freak. I, I try to control everything in my life and plan everything. But he really taught me to just relax and um, trust what's happening and, and kind of like fix things or um, make decisions as you go. You are spontaneous. Mm -hmm. So I didn't become a completely spontaneous person mm -hmm. just yet. But when I make a painting, um, I think of it as um, a child. So I'm a creator. I give a birth to an idea. <laughs> and then um, I start working on it. And it's like I always say, it's like with kids, uh, you really want to see them finding their own way. You don't want to mm. tell them what you want them to become. So you really start listening where this is all going and you work uh, and help and guide because from the moment you started putting first plan on the canvas, you almost don't own it anymore. You just guide it to where it wants to be. So this is my biggest insight on like being a mother. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> and uh, an artist. <laughs> yeah. Like it really just changes you and yeah. I feel like I have um, a unique perspective because like I grew up with you as my artist mom. For anyone who's ever dealt with feeling guilty, like choosing between your art career and and being all like at home all day with your kids, there's nothing that I like I never felt abandoned or I never felt like um, you didn't care as much or you put your art above kids. Like I never felt that, I never had that feeling. It only had positive effects on me and all of us, you know. Yeah, I think it's just an amazing lifestyle and it's a great privilege to be, because as an artist, you can work from home mm -hmm. and you own your own business so you can manage your time. And I think if you just plan things ahead of time, like both of you, both of you have these really strong schedules and you just plan your time and you have babysitters and, um, you know, certain hours set aside for your painting, which makes you more dedicated in the end. So I think that's the real key is what I'm taking away mm -hmm. is to really treat your business, um, treat your art like a business. And it's just as important as raising kids. They're equally important. So. I think it's the best thing, actually, uh, for, you know, artists have to have kids. You don't have to go to the office. Nobody's, you know, forcing you to do things. There's fun color yeah. things to play with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, I think it's, it's amazing. Just the staying disciplined is kind of like what you need to remember. Yeah, and totally. it's totally uh, doable just to uh, balance all of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, though, I remember as a kid wanting so badly to find blank white paper. Blank white, and we didn't have printers back then, right? So blank white paper wasn't available. Hmm. And to find blank white paper was such a hot commodity. It was like, I don't know, if you could give me anything as a kid that that was like so special, it was blank white paper. That's so funny. <laughs> I know. And yeah. so maybe now with printers, everybody has blank white paper around, but... You know, if you grow up in an artist house, there's always something to paint on. Mm -hmm. I actually, we have these crayons for our baby when he's old enough to use them, but they're they're washable crayons and mm -hmm. you can use them in the tub. So oh, fun. Can, I like, love those. He can like write on <laughs> the white tub and yeah. then it just washes away. Or walls, I guess. He could draw on anything. <laughs> use it in a bathroom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Read a, but no, bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> we just painted the walls in the house. <laughs> yeah, but I have so many memories as a little kid painting with you guys and and having that freedom. So for me, it was only good that came out of it. I, don't, I can't think of anything neg negative. Well, thank you both for um, joining me today. And thank you, Rita, for flying all the way from Texas thank to you. be here for this <laughs> podcast. So if you loved this podcast, you're definitely going to enjoy the other podcast we did with Rita, um, all about pricing artwork. And that was just 
so inspiring and I got so many ideas out of that podcast. So go check that out. Make sure to subscribe to this and like this video and hit the notification bell so that you know when our next podcast comes out and you don't miss it.